plug-in hybrid, pure electric vehicle, or range extender, which one is ultimately the best? Well, why choose when you can have all three? That's right, the vehicle I'm driving today brings the best of these three together into one. It has a combined range of 1,400 kilometers. That's right, this car, if it wanted to, could drive from Paris to Rome. Welcome to EV.com. So welcome back to the channel. Before we get started, don't forget to give us a like and a subscribe for more great EV content. So on the channel, we've had plug-in hybrids, which I think you know about. We've had extended range electric vehicles, which have a small generator, which charges the battery, which powers electric motors. And of course, we've had the battery electric vehicles. So that's batteries powering electric motors. Well, today we have something a little bit different from all those three. This is the Lincoln Co. 10 E MP. And for our loyal followers, yes, you've probably seen this car before. We have done a review of the pure electric version. That is why today I'm not really going to talk about the brand too much or even this car specifically. I want to talk about what is underneath it and why it could be very important. So in most parts of the world, EV adoption rates are increasing. More and more people are falling in love with electric and electrified vehicles. However, there are still a number of places around the world where there are still deterrents stopping people from making the switch to electric. Maybe the infrastructure is a bit rubbish. Maybe charging costs too much. Maybe EV costs are still too high. These things, of course, are being worked on. But in the meantime, things like plug-in hybrids, things like extended range electric vehicles are filling the void. And that's where this comes in. So what exactly is going on under the hood in this vehicle? So if I open up here immediately, I can see it's a little bit crowded. There's quite a lot going on in here. So first things first, a big engine slash generator here, 1.5 uh, liters of that engine. Underneath this, I can see, or behind this rather, I can see some electric motors. So we have both a kind of gasoline powertrain as well as an electric powertrain, as well as on the back axle has additional electric motors. So we actually have three different motors that are capable of powering this vehicle. So I know you're saying, what does this mean, Toby? Well, I'm going to explain it to you. This basically means this vehicle can be a number of different types of new energy vehicles. So it can be a pure electric vehicle. The battery in here is bigger than you would usually get in a plug-in hybrid. This one has a pure electric range of either 120 or 240 kilometers. So actually a very decent amount of pure electric range. Or you can do a combination of both, a plug kind of like a plug-in hybrid. Hybrid. So it could be combined, you know, using the engine when necessary and using the battery motors when necessary. In addition, it has extended range electric vehicle tech. So if you want to, you can use the engine to charge up the battery as well. So basically it has lots of different ways it can use the powertrains and the energy sources. But let's get behind the wheel and see what it's like to drive. So what does all this tech mean for the driving experiences? Well, once again, it tries to bring the best of both worlds. So of course we do have dual electric motors and a gasoline engine as well. What I like about this car is that it's not just pure, super, super torquey like you might get in some electric vehicles. I wouldn't say it's as sluggish as some kind of like more traditional fuel vehicle, but we kind of have a nice in-between ground. We have a good amount of acceleration without too much torque behind it. Of course, because of the car's setup, it has to come in all-wheel drive. So it's all-wheel drive as standard. So while it can be very sluggish, if I want to put my foot down, it can really, really fly. So it has a 0 to 100 acceleration of 5.1 seconds. So for me, that's in a nice sweet spot. I always think between five and six seconds is pretty much all you're ever going to need. Most of the time you would be driving in a kind of combined smart hybrid, if you will. So the car would decide what to use. So in terms of batteries, as I mentioned, we have an 18.4 or a 38.2 battery. That's, so that's either a 120 kilometer or 240 kilometers of pure electric range. So with a full tank, and that's a 60 liter tank and a fully charged,
recharged battery, this car can go 1,400 kilometers, which is pretty nuts when you think about it. So to put this in perspective, this is the same as driving from Paris to Rome, not as the crow flies, but actually driving along the roads or even from LA to Seattle. It's a massive distance. The question is, is this distance really necessary? I don't know, let us know what you think in the comments below. Why does this tech exist and why do we need it? Well, as I mentioned, you know, BEVs, depending on where you are, sometimes it's difficult. Sometimes there's no charging, sometimes it's more expensive or whatever. Is this the answer? Well, I'm not sure. All I can say is that I think it could potentially be a good transitionary step between traditional gasoline and pure electric because ultimately the goal is to go pure electric right but for whatever reasons pure electric is not an option or is this something you don't want to choose we need to have more options for consumers number one to introduce them to the benefits of a pure electric vehicle you know this can be driven as pure electric and it can have a lot of the benefits of a pure electric vehicle and number two because infrastructure is still being built charging needs to be improved availability and price electric vehicles need to go down in price so while we're in this transitionary period Period, we need to have more options we need to have better options for consumers what do you think do you agree with that or am i just talking rubbish make sure you let me know in the comments below so in terms of efficiency obviously this is a hybrid vehicle so it does use both but we can get the stats for each so for the gas we have got 4.5 liters for the last 100 kilometers and for the electricity 7.1 kilo hours which is pretty low obviously these stats are a little bit hard to understand because we are using a combination of both of them at the same time but if you wanted to use more electric or more gas so for example if you had better access to charges maybe you prefer using electricity then of course this could be done or if you had less access to chargers you could choose a profile which uses more gas it prioritizes uses of gas while obviously using electricity to come in and help when it's needed so the tech of the Lincoln Co Z10 EMP brings an alternative option another option for those looking to move away from a traditional gasoline engine but is it an important stepping stone supposedly it brings the best of plug-in hybrids extended range electric vehicles and pure electric vehicles is this something you would like to have in your market make sure you let us know in the comments below or do you think this tech is overly complicated and over engineered be sure to give us a like and a subscribe thanks for watching i'll see you next time